Welcome back to our channel release on Netflix let's start the video now. Why Batman Rarely Uses Batarangs in the Dark Knight Trilogy One of Batman's most iconic gadgets is the Batarang, but the non-lethal weapon is rarely used in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Trilogy. The Batarang is one of Batman's most iconic gadgets, yet he uses them extremely rarely in Christopher Nolan's celebrated Dark Knight Trilogy. The films make full use of Batman's arsenal of non-lethal devices, from his grapple gun to his gliding cape, yet his batarangs are seldom seen, let alone used against criminals. The reason for this has to do with the tone and relative realism that Nolan intended for his iteration of Batman. New Batman origin story shows us the Dark Knight wasn't always a playboy. Batman, The Knight No. 2 shines a spotlight on the fact that the Dark Knight's alter ego, Bruce Wayne, was not always the playboy he now appears to be. As one of the biggest bachelors in comic books, Batman has had a lot of love interests over the years. While discussion normally revolves around whether Catwoman or Talia al Ghul is Bruce Wayne's true love, we have also seen him romantically linked to superheroes such as Wonder Woman, Black Canary, and Zatanna as well as civilians such as Julie Madison, Vicki Vale, and Sylvia Street Cloud. Despite being an introverted loner who seems to shun all romantic interests or thoughts of settling down in favor of dedicating himself to his mission, it is safe to say that writers enjoy portraying Bruce Wayne as something of a ladies' man. Also subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for more Netflix movies, web series, reviews, news and updates. This is an interesting scene to witness as longtime readers have rarely seen Bruce so awkwardly rejected by a potential love interest. The scene also shows Bruce's naivety and highlights just how young and inexperienced he is at this point in his life. Whether as Bruce Wayne or as Batman, we rarely see him making the first move on a potential romantic partner, let alone reject it. Normally when a female love interest leaves Bruce, it is because they have been romantically linked and his life as Batman has gotten in the way of their already blossoming relationship. Here, Bruce's advances are brushed aside in the case of unrequited love, and the age gap in the relationship between the two is shown as being the reason why Lucy does not accept his advances, with her even referring to him as petty om, little man. With this brief interaction in Batman, The Knight, we get a glimpse of what a young Bruce Wayne was like around women, and how he still had much to learn about the world. This is also an indication of where Bruce got his attraction to female cat burglars, as the gray shadow bears an uncanny resemblance to the woman Bruce would be most heavily involved in, Selina Kyle aka Catwoman. While this is an unusual situation for him, it is both a refreshing and revealing insight into a younger and less experienced Bruce that has rarely been seen in the comics. The Dark Knight was Christopher Nolan's Bond film. It's no secret that Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy left a lasting mark on modern cinema as we know it. Batman Begins, and, more notably, The Dark Knight, was one of the first films to launch the now infamous trend of a gritty reboot, and signaled a major shift from the campy action of the early aughts to the darker fare of the post-9-11 landscape. Several filmmakers have cited Nolan as an influence since, even fellow Brit Sam Mendes, who took direct inspiration from the tonal shift in Nolan's Batman films. In terms of what he achieved, specifically The Dark Knight, it was a game changer for everybody, Mendes told Indy. Wire. Thank you for watching the video till end for more Netflix movies, web series, reviews, news and update please visit our website www.releaseonnetflix.com and if you like our video, hit the like button and share with your friends to stay updated please subscribe to our channel release on Netflix.